Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me on an extremely windy day here at Lion Rock. I'm sure you can hear the background noise, the trees getting blown around. Oh, so windy. Uh, first off, I've got to say a shout out to Heather. Um, I was at Castle Helen working a couple of days ago and I assume, sorry, maybe if that's a bad assumption, but I assume it was your husband asked me to say hello to you. So I hope you're having a nice day. Today's video is a bit of a spur of the moment one prompted by some comments on other videos and stuff I thought it was worthwhile uh, video to do. It's about why us Brits default to using the rope so much when we're building belays, right? And that's what I've done here. I've built three point belay out of the rope, all out of reach. So loads of clove hitches back onto me. I've got my imaginary partner on belay as well. Sorry if that wind noise is so loud. I just struggled to find the time uh, to do these videos when I'm really busy at work so I've got to snatch these opportunities we're not chucking it down with rain. What I've got to say first before I go into details is as climbers we just want to know loads of methods of how to build belay so that when we arrive to a belay stance we can pick the right method, the appropriate one, the one that's nice and safe obviously but also really efficient and quick and everything like that and there's a few other things to think about that I'll come on to in a minute. So I will get some dislikes on this video because some people absolutely hate this idea of using the rope and I, there's reasons why they do but it's all about doing the appropriate setup in the appropriate place. So even on the same route, it might be at one belay stance, the rope's the right thing. The next thing it's a sling setup would be best. The next thing maybe a cordlet would be the best. We don't really carry cordlets in the UK much and I'll kind of, maybe I'll touch on why in a minute. But it's just about picking the right one. There isn't like a best belay setup. It's not like the quad is the one thing to do. It's not like this is the one thing to do. Having all the different elements and being able to build them up together, that for me is the key, right? This is a pretty standard thing to come up to on a UK trad route. Three bits of gear, far back from the edge, a bit spread out. We have a strong trad ethic here in the UK. We have a, just it's so rare to have like bolted belays or anything like that we don't have hardly any multi-pitch sport at all and if we do have like a belay station built it tends to be some tap around a, a block or a tree or something we have a very strong no bolting ethic in so many of the areas in the uk so let's say i was working on a learn to lead course here in the uk and teaching people to build belays I'd want people to leave those couple of days or however long the course is, knowing something like this by default. If I was working in the States, for example, somewhere where it was like bolted belay stations, not saying everywhere in the States is, of course, but you know, that's more common, then yet yeah, this would probably be much further down the list and I'd default to those kind of cord anchors, sling anchors, cordlets, that kind of stuff. But we just don't have it here. So that's one reason we default to it. Probably the second reason is kind of, more of a historical reason that's still appropriate but we try often to put ourselves in the system on purpose to protect the gear because it's trad gear we're trying to not put shocks onto it and stuff like that we don't always need to there's plenty of mega solid trad gear that we can belay directly off but sometimes it isn't so it's nice to have those different options probably a historical thing from when people didn't have a, as good gear as we've got now as well doesn't mean we don't use guide mode, doesn't mean we don't use slings to set up and all that kind of stuff. We just really do need to know this kind of thing. What I've done is three clove hitches on a big HMS carabiner. It's a Beal Joker, so it's like 9.1 millimeters. That fits on with no drama. I've gone into my rope loop. I've belayed off the rope loop as well. I've done other videos on this. Someone commented the other day about perhaps ring loading that loop there. That is a theoretical possibility that the figure of eight can roll look at some tests though if you're interested because it actually has to be such big forces that it just isn't a worry of mine at all we could be lay off the rope loop again i've done another video on that as well so i'm not going to go into that now but i've built this the anchors are miles apart what else could i do would i have a cordlet long enough uh, probably not could i have linked those two with a sling yes i could but what if i've placed them all on spike runners as i've climbed up the route 
Okay, I've got one 240 centimetre sling left on the back of my harness. Well, that's not going to link those three and give me a good angle. So I've decided the rope's a good thing to do. And I could say I've always got the rope on me. Of course, I have always got the rope attached when I'm climbing. But does it mean I'm going to have enough rope? Well, no, not always. But more often than not, there will be enough rope to do all this kind of thing. So it's an adaptable setup that works in so many different places. I put my mate on belay. I'm belaying away. They fall off. I can brace myself a bit, so I'm just protecting the anchors a little bit. Like I say, do I always need to? No, of course I don't. Do I sometimes want to? Yes, I do. They fall off. Okay, I've held them. They get climbing again. Great. Are there some negatives to this setup? Yes, absolutely there are. It uses shed loads of rope. Look at it. It's not even that far away and you've used loads. My mate comes up to me. Let's say I'm block leading. I'm going to do all the pitches. Maybe they're a novice or maybe for whatever reason. I haven't got a PowerPoint for them to clip into. They'd have to replicate that, and that takes time. It's not efficient, is it? If we're swinging the leads and they're just going to grab the gear and go on to the next pitch, which is the common thing to do here in the UK, well, that's fine. Maybe I could tie off the belay plate uh, or do something else with big legs that's appropriate. But there isn't a nice master point to go into, so that is definitely a downside. In terms of this escaping the system, well, firstly, let's be honest, how often do we have to do that? hopefully and thankfully not very often but if I do have to escape the system yeah it's a right ball ache compared to be laying directly off the anchors but we know how to do it so it's all good other things um, you know, I can't move around very much if my mate falls off it's not the most comfortable thing for me because I get pulled in a certain direction slightly of course we've considered ABC anchor be layer climber that's not just left and right but up and down as well so it shouldn't be too bad. But again, it's not as nice as belaying straight off the anchors, is it? Of course it isn't. There's going to be some other pros and cons to it. Someone said to me the other day on a, a, a YouTube comment about how I'm, uh, I'm going to be, you know, I can't move out of the way of rockfall and stuff like that. Uh, maybe, but I'm not convinced that you're going to have loads of movement if you're just clove hitched into the anchors and belaying off them separately anyway. But, you know, maybe it's a consideration. I'm not saying it isn't. It's just doing the appropriate thing at the appropriate sort of uh, circumstance on a B lane. It's picking the right one and sometimes combining all those different systems as well. That's key, isn't it? So is this a foolproof, one size fits all thing? Although it does work everywhere, it's not going to be my default choice everywhere, but neither would a cordlet be, neither would a sling be. You get my point. It's picking the right system for the right job. Please do comment below. Like I say, I will get some dislikes for this because people do get like really protective of their favourite belay setup. Whenever I'm setting up a belay, there's always a reason I've done the setup uh, that I've done. I'm never just going, oh, I fancy doing this today. It's just not the way it works. There's always judgment involved. And that judgment comes from years of climbing and trying all these different methods and going here, there and everywhere, whether it's the UK, the Alps, all the other places I've climbed as well use that experience to pick the right one and just think is it safe is it an efficient thing to do and does it work well in that situation so fire away with those questions happy to answer as best i can as always thanks massively for the support for the channel we've gone over 10,000 subscribers which blow my mind the boy is here he's just out of shot today his ears are blowing around in the wind he's having a nice time with a stick but sorry for him not being in shot today he always gets mentioned if he is um, find us on insta find us on facebook click the like button smash the subscribe button all massively appreciated as always thanks very much for watching more videos coming up very soon